Hey, it's Ginger Boy. Welcome back once again to some Soul Blazer here, where everything talks, including plants. Yes, I got a lot of things saying everything talks, which is true. Everything does talk, and there are more things that talk than plants in this game. So that will be something uh, getting into uh, actually pretty soon, I think. Um, let's see. Um, where is... Release the goat. Well, there's a goat. Um, I'm looking for a particular... Uh, portal switch thing. Because there's one in particular that is... Needed to progress in the game. Um... And I can't remember which one it is, but as soon as I get it, I will probably leave and come back because if you wait until the end, you have to come back anyway. And this is her, Lisa. White snoring coming inside from inside the house. But yes, that is who Lisa is who I was uh, looking for. Released a tulip. Another one! Well, plant. Yeah. So, plants uh, seem to be a big thing in this first town. Not necessarily a really big thing, but there are quite a few of them in this uh, first town. Not so many later on. And, uh, so, one thing I sort of want to talk about. I mean, it's not really that uh, big of a deal, or important, or anything of that matter. Um, there are actually two sequels to this game that over time I will probably play as well. Uh, Illusion of Gaia and Terra Gamma, I believe is how it's pronounced. And so I will be playing those in the future, probably. But with that... Um, where is it? Medical herb. I did not need that, actually. Uh, goat! I wonder why people live in such small houses. Can you believe the village chief was swallowed up in one of the paintings in the house on the hill? Foreshadowing. But, uh, I don't know where I was going. Yes, sequels. Also, this game has a uncanon prequel, if you can call it that. If you've ever seen the game Act Razor, you play as a divine creator. You go through levels and then you build a town and you have to take care of little monster things. Very similar to Soul Blazer, but uh, it's not actually the prequel to this game, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because there was Act Razor 2. Which uh, is completely different than the first game. So that may be a game I will go back and visit again. Or not again, but visit. Because I have not played that one uh, on here before. I have played it. But uh, yeah, it is actually a really fun game. And it shares a lot of similarities between Soul Blazer and itself, mainly because Enix made that one as well, um, or at least the studio that made Soul Blazer made uh, Act Razor. Quite a fun game, actually, very different. But you will see a if I do play it, a lot of similarities, and it really does feel like it's um, the prequel to Soul Blazer. In the fact of you're kind of creating the world and then Soul Blazer, you're like saving the world. Uh, lots of fun. And then the other two, Illusion of Gaia and Terra Gamma, are very different, but still very excellent games. And they are the sequels. Um, I don't know if they're pure sequels or they're just in the same universe. I've never really looked into that super far, but I do know that they're in the same series. So, 
talking to Lisa and doing her dream thing actually opens up this area and the only way to get that switch. And this down here gives us a paintbrush. Leo's brush to be exact. And it is actually a paintbrush. But I want to switch back to my medical herb and then kill off of these guys who spawn forever here. There we go. One foul shot. And who do I release this time? Released an old man. Yes. So most of the people within the town I will be talking to after I finish the underground castle here. Because I believe this is the last area. I believe there's only two areas. I could be wrong, but I remember just two areas for it. And, uh, really, uh, the underground castle is, uh, you know, basic starting area. Not, uh oh, I forgot. Your magic, uh, single directional magic only fires the way you're actually facing. But yes, everyone that I'm releasing right now is not super important for the most part. So I don't need to go out of town or go out of the underground castle to go talk to them immediately. And then there's this part, which I always forget to go all the way right here and do these two things because... There, this is the only way to actually get to him, is by just walking straight across the conveyor, conveyor, conveyor belt. Uh, so I forget to do that, and I skip these, and then get very confused because I think it's start. Yes, if you press start, underground castle east, a monster layers remaining ten. So it actually does tell you how many monster layers you have remaining. I released some ivy. So now I can actually talk to that tulip and I can talk to the old man. I think it was an old man that I released earlier. Uh, tool shop owner's son. So he is not so useful, but uh, he does give you a little interesting thing. And then also over here, um, no, that is not one of them. Um, there it is. I was going to say, I was thinking one of them. This, this one is actually the slightly, it's not really annoying, but it's really kind of interesting how it's set up. Because you have these little flies that are, you know, pretty slow. And so you can take them out pretty easily. And then, you know. I don't know how many come out. I think 10 or so. And then you hit this one. Then you get another fly. But this time, they uh, sit there spawning forever. So I'm going to wait until they are all done spawning. Walk over here. Fire my magic. Take them all out. And I get another one. So this just kind of goes. They're all done spawning, so do that. And one more. Which super fast spawner. And again, just take them out. You get enough gems to replenish the single magic bolt you use, so not a big deal there. That is how I always take care of them, because uh, you don't lose health. All th wow, I can speak. Uh, also... One thing I've forgotten to point out, whenever you, let me get hurt here, a couple hit points, whenever you disable a monster spawner and actually press the button, and I believe it has to go to the town, not do something in uh, the immediate area, I could be wrong, but yeah, so it has to be in town, can't be in the immediate area. I'm actually doing kind of poor right here because I'm getting hurt a whole bunch. But do, 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 do this. Released another tulip. You'll notice 
I actually got some health back from that. So every time you release something for the town, um, not in the immediate area, but the town, you actually restore one bar of health. So that is actually how you get your health back besides leveling up, because when you level up, you actually get uh, health back as well. That creates a little shortcut, and I believe, yes, one monster layer remaining, which is that one, which I cannot remember if I kill those now, if they respawn, uh, if I go far enough off screen. But they are annoying, but they do give you um, a chance, a way to get unlimited experience for the most part. I know once I defeat this monster spawner, um, I will go back to town. I think I can actually sit next. Oh, no, I don't. I can't do that. Uh, I may have to do, do with that sword. Be able to save those creatures once you return. Uh, I want to stay. That time I read it correctly. Yeah. So I was going to hide behind the uh, gem. I can't do that. Uh, that is okay because... That guy was dead. I released an old man. And he's screaming. Yes. Old man is a screaming there. He is very upset. Those respond because went off of uh, the screen. And I want to return to Grass Valley. And so if you ever leave one of the dungeons, if you want Calm Dungeons, you still keep your lower health. Uh, not much you can do about that. Uh, this plant tells you about the Dream Rod. Don't really need that because I already know what the Dream Rod is. Uh, you look like you could be at Crab Walking. Oh yeah, that's one thing that I never uh, went over. Crab Walking. In a dungeon, you can actually hold your sword out and crab walk, and you will actually hurt enemies when you do so. But uh, not a huge deal since losing my wife to an illness. I noticed a goat hanging around my place. I was so lonely, I decided to keep the goat as a pet. But the goat does not exist right now. Uh, tool, off, tool shop owner's son. Some goat food. How much it costs? Well, way too much for you to... Yes, I will start give it to you for free. I have a bag of goat food now. What do I want to do with the goat food? Well, equip it, of course. And go feed a goat. Because why not? Oh, you have some food. Yeah, if you talk to the goat beforehand, uh, he'll ask you if you can go get some food for him. Uh, wish we can get inside the painting. And again, a bit of foreshadowing there. Not that big of a deal. And again, that medical herb, you really don't need it because you can get one for free from the uh, tool shop owner. But it's there. And that goat just goes and begs the kid for more uh, goat food. But the kid doesn't really realize that. Anyway, I think that is about everything I can do right now. There's this guy. He's the architect. He built all the houses. Come back later. He will show us something, which I will do later. This guy is freaking out. It was a painting. Strange fear face appeared, and it was terrifying. Anyway, there is a picture of the village chief. He appears to be sad. Yes, he does. And there's the plant, you know. Have you gone back to where her dream was? Well, I don't need to. And I can't remember. Actually, I don't think it's up here. Um, I will do that part later, what I was talking about, because I don't fully remember where it is, and I don't think I can get to it yet. Anyway. So, in the next time on Soul Blazer, I will be going into this painting. Anyway, see you guys then.